Okay, the lecture is about moment of inertia. Area moment of inertia, we show it with I. So area moment of inertia, definition of inertia meaning that resistance to move or reluctant to change or uh, or tendency to remain on change. So resistance to move, we call it in physics, right? Resistance to change. That's actually the meaning of the inertia. Now, area moment of inertia means the resistance to bending. I give you the example of the ruler. If I have a ruler like this, and I put the force on this, this thing will bend crazy. It's going to bend like this. It bends a lot. If the same ruler, if I just flip it, if I instead of using like this, this is like position one, if I flip the ruler to this position, and I apply the force to it, it doesn't even bend much. So it bends like this. Not much of bending. But what's happening? This is the same ruler, right? In this case, the base is the larger size, the height is the smaller size. And then if I go this way, the base is this way, the height is this way. Now, let's just work numerically. If the base here is equal to 4, the height is 1. Down here, base is 1, the height is 4. The area moment of inertia for a rectangular shape is 112 bh cube. So 112 bh cube, I have 1 over 12. In this case, I have 4 times 1. So the answer for this is 4 over 12, which is going to be uh, 0 0.333. That's how much you get for moment of inertia in scenario 1. In scenario 2, I2 is equal to 1 over 12 bh cube. I have 1 over 12 times 4 to the power of 3. So 4 to the power of 3 is 60. Yeah, that's cube actually. That's, that's area moment of inertia. That's cube. It's not area. Right? So in, in one side is cube, in the other side is just uh, not cube. So I'm going to have 4 times 4 times 4, which is 64, divided by 12. I got 5.3. So if you divide 5.3 divided by, is almost 20 times more. So I2 divided by I1, I got 18. So you see, 18 times is resistance to rotate, is resistance to bend. That's why the ruler, nothing happened to it. Once I change it, the ruler was about to break. So um, moment of inertia, basically we're going to talk about those basic shapes that we discussed. The basic shapes that we discussed was um, a rectangle, the base, the height, and then we have uh, a triangle which we have base and height and then uh, we have a circle with the radius of R we have the semicircle and then we have the quarter circle so for the area moment of inertia for a rectangle is 112 B over H3 again but you have to remember how what types of bending do you have so we have to be clear in this case we mean this i we mean i of y right because you're going to have rotation about like this sorry i of x the rotation is like this uh, in this case we have 1 over uh, 36 bh cube so for the circle i need to look it up so hopefully i have it open There you go, I have it open here. So for circle, it's 1 over 4 pi r to the power of 4 quad 
and then for uh, semicircle is 1 over 8 so by the way if, if you go from circle to semicircle to quarter circle it just you divide it by area like they are going into like from 1 4 to 1 8 and 1 16 so 1 over 8 pi r to the power of 2 and then the last one is 1 over 16 pi r to the power of 4 so again we know it about different areas but there is something called transfer of i so this is i x again the, the the moment of inertia that i calculated in this case is about their center point is about here is about their centroid and same thing here about the centroid same thing here about the centroid so what would be happening if you got like a beam like i beam that i discussed or a t-shaped beam we know in the center but what would be the transition of it so the transition of it there's an equation for it it says that if you have the area here and your area is away from the center of the mass somewhere here or whatever the location that you have if this is ix and then you want to do a rotation about um, yeah this is assume that this is ix prime we have the rotation about here the center point here is ix if this distance is d d is the transfer distance and then the area of this is a what you could say you could say ix prime is equal to ix plus a d square that's where we transfer the moment of inertia like for instance in in an i beam you have a lot of area up a lot of area down they are away from the center of rotation or center of uh, bending they are away from the center of bending that's where you need to do those transfers so i want to move on to using this equation and what we learn to calculate a, a composite moment of inertia so i have a couple of examples i'm going to start with a t-shape example i have then we move on to a u-shape one so in this case i have i have a t-shape like this i want to calculate determine the moment of inertia of cross-sectional t-beam with respect to x prime which is passing through the centroid of the cross section now i don't know where the centroid of this cross section is so will be the first one will be a job that we just learned a minute ago we need to find the centroid of this and then the next thing that we need to do we need to find the moment of inertia for each of them then we transfer them to that location so let's do it step by step in step one we want to find the centroid of this i'm going to call this one one call this one two then i can say the centroid for this we're going to draw this shape remember we just interested in y bar we know x bar is in the middle so i'm going to assume that the x is like this the y is going through the center here up so the center of the first one is located the shape one and shape two shape one the center is located here on the y will be 30 plus half of 150 so 30 plus half of 150 will be 105 location of x bar the next one the location is simply 15 remember i got 105 i add the 30 plus half of this and then the a for the first for the first shape is 150 times 30 which is going to be 4500 i guess 150 times 30 4500 it stays the same for both of them my bad this is y bar not x bar so and then i'm going to find a y bar so it's 105 times 4500 Again, in this case, you don't need to carry all these large numbers, right? Because these are proportional. You can divide all the areas by the same number. Like instead of carrying 4,500, I can just carry 4.5. Because those are just a ratio in the calculation, right? We call it those are weighted average. So 4 times uh, 4.5 times 105. I'm going to get 47. Two five, and then the next one is one five times four point five, sixty seven point five. 
So the total area, again, actually, it's, it, the, 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 the total um, area is uh, 9 based on my calculation, and I have this one. Uh, 47 plus 472.5. I'm going to get this much divided by 9. The center is at 60. So I got y bar is equal to whatever you got here. The sum of a y bar divided by 9 the answer is 60 so the center is located at somewhere at 60 this is 60 now I need to find I x 1 I need to find I y 1 so when you find the x 1 and you find the x 2 you find them about their center point here and the transfer distance is this distance from here transferring to here this will be d 1 and for the second shape, you get from this center going to the center for the overall shape. This will be D2. So IX1 and IX2 for the shape 1, for the shape 2. Is half of B, sorry, 1 over 12 BH cube. 1 over 12 BH cube. Can you help me? What's the base for the, for the first one? The base is 30, right? 1 over 12, 30, the height is 150. And then how much the base is for the second shape? 75 or 150? Yeah, 150. Yeah. So 150 into 30 to the power of 3. We come up with crazy numbers. So uh, I found 1 divided by 12 times 30 times... 150 to the power of 3. You got a big number too. I got a huge number. So it's like 8, 4. <laughs> 8, 4. No, it's all 150 to the power of 3. Just 150 to the power of 3, not all equation. It's just the H. So I got this much for this, and for the other one, 1 divided by 12 times 1. How much you got? So maybe I did, made a mistake, right? 1 divided by 12 times... Th oh, you, you're talking about the second one. Second, yeah. yeah, yeah. So tell me the number for that. 250. So let me just do that. 150 times 30 to the power of 3. No, I got a different number. I got 3, 3, 7, 5, 5, 0. So that's how much I got. 112. Maybe you did to the power of 2. So I have Ix1, Ix2. So remember that you have to transfer both of them to the center point here. Right? So you can say Ix prime 1 is equal to ix plus ad squared. We already know a1, right? How much the area for a1 is. We know how much area for d1, d1 is. So a1, ax1 is this, 4a37500 plus the area is 4500 times the, uh, the d, the d1, which is from here to here. I need to calculate it, right? The y bar for that was 105, 105 minus 60. D1 is 105 minus 60. I didn't calculate AY for 4725. Uh, 4725. This one, yeah, this, this is a different calculation. Don't worry about that. That was just for, this is, we calculated weighted average. I didn't want to get a large number here. So I was looking for just this 60. But the area is 4,500. It's not 4.5 that I use it there, right? That was just for the ratio. You could just use the ratio 1 and 1 here. It doesn't matter. Uh, because you are weighting with your uh, area. That was, I just use it for simplicity. I, I, don't, I didn't want to carry uh, large numbers, but at the end it... Yeah, you got the same number, right? D in this case is equal to, from the center here, which is 15, 60 minus 15, which is going to be 45. So that's D2.
So I'm going to have uh, d1, and so ix1 times the the height, sorry, the area, which is 4,500. D1 is 45 to the power of 2. That's for the first one. For the second one, ix prime 2 is ix2 plus a2 d2 to the power of 2. You just repeat the same number, right? 337500 plus 4,500. And then in this case, your, your uh, d is different, right? So D is uh, 45. Yeah, it's the same actually. I didn't. I thought it's different. It wasn't. So you can calculate when you when you found these two, you can simply add them together. So if you have the first one and the second one, you can say I x prime total is equal to I x prime one plus I x prime two. So uh, if you have any other question like this, you can follow the same process. So the process would be first, I'm going to find, yeah, so you're going to find uh, B 112 BH cube, again, for depending on what shape you have. And then from your shape, you, you, you need to, if you have the distance, again, all these equations are about center point of that component. If you have multiple components, you would need to transfer it. The transfer would be basically based on Ix plus Ad square, and then you can calculate it from there. And that was the process we followed. Okay, let me close this.